I'm Jason Bowman, director of game design at Paizo and creator of the Pathfinder role-playing game. Today, I was hoping to get a chance to talk to all of you a little bit about symmetry and asymmetry in games. And in particular, how that applies to role-playing games and what it says about your game. So before we get started, I want to spend a moment to talk about what is symmetry and asymmetry in games. Uh, there's a lot of information out there, uh, and I kind of want to give you a bit of the basics. Uh, if you search around here on YouTube, you'll find a lot of videos that talk about this in games. Uh, so I'm not going to do too deep of a dive, but I do want to give you at least the basic understanding so that uh, when I start talking about RPGs, it all makes sense. So let's start out with symmetry. What is symmetry in a game? Well, at its simplest, it means that everyone who is playing the game is playing by the same set of rules. Um, you most often see this in competitive games. Uh, so think of a game like chess, right? Uh, you and the other player both have the same pieces. They both work the same way. You are playing a symmetrical game. Uh, same goes for something like Monopoly or Settlers of Catan or Ticket to Ride. Um, but it applies to things more than just board games. It also applies to some online games and some shooters often use symmetrical design. So if you think back to Doom and Quake multiplayer, uh, even more modern games like Fortnite, generally speaking, all the players are playing by the same set of rules and how you use those rules and how you use the game environment determines whether or not you win. Of course, there are exceptions. Not all uh, symmetrical games are competitive. Some of them are, are co-op games. Um, think of something like Forbidden Island, where you are all a bunch of explorers on an island trying to get the treasure uh, before the island uh, is destroyed. Um, you all play by the same rules, you're playing on the same board, but you're working together to accomplish your goals. Uh, there's a game uh, that won Spiel a few years back, Hanabi. It's a, it's a card game where you are all trying to put on a fireworks show, and you hand, have a hand of cards, um, but your cards face out. And everyone else can see them, but you cannot. And you have to kind of communicate with the other players in ways that allow you to play the cards in order. It's a, it's a symmetrical game, but it's cooperative. So um, that's symmetry. But what is asymmetry in games? Well, asymmetry means that the players are participating uh, using a different set of rules from one another. Um, this is very frequently used in cooperative games. Um, where characters have to work together to, to accomplish their goals. So if you think of a game like uh, Arkham Horror, everyone's playing a different investigator. You're kind of playing the same game, but you all have different investigators with different powers and abilities. Uh, if you think of Pandemic, uh, you're trying to solve a bunch of diseases around the world, but you're all playing slightly different characters who can do slightly different things. Um, games like uh, Gloomhaven, if you've managed to play that for the 400 hours it takes to play, um, you quickly come to realize that the players are very different from one another. The characters are, are play drastically different from one another. You might all be doing the same things on the board, but you do them in very different ways. Um, this also, once again, applies to uh, online and video games as well. Uh, if you think of games like uh, the team shooter games, like, uh, like uh, Overwatch. Overwatch is a game where all of the players are playing very different characters with very defined roles that play very differently from one another. If you are playing a healer and you go running right into the front of the firefight, you will get mowed down almost immediately um, because the game is very asymmetrical in that front. You're not designed to handle that kind of damage. You have to leave that to the tankier characters. Now, there's plenty of games that break the mold and kind of uh, do both to one degree or another. Many asymmetric games have a certain measure of symmetry built into them. Um, think about uh, Pandemic. Let's go back to that. Uh, in Pandemic, uh, you might all be playing different characters, but you fundamentally are still playing the same game. Most of the moves and most of the things you can do on your turn are the same, kind of, no matter what character you are. So you're asymmetric in some regards, but you're symmetric in others. Um, there are... Um, plenty of symmetrical games that, even though they are almost entirely symmetrical, 
will alter their play environment just based on tiny little things that force them to play differently. Even chess, which is probably one of the most symmetrical games out there, one of you still gets to go first. And that does change your footing and how you enter that game. There's entire books written on whether or not you're going first or going second in chess, whether or not you're on offense or defense, and whether or not, and how that plays out based on whether or not you are first or second. So there's a lot of different ways that those, those things can express themselves. How does this translate into role-playing games, right? Um, that's what I do for a living. Uh, so how does this uh, uh, express itself in a role-playing game environment? Well, role-playing games at their heart are mostly asymmetrical. You have a GM whose job it is to narrate the story and be the um, actor for the enemies and NPCs in the world. And then you have the player characters who generally function on an entirely different rule set, uh, who have characters who are created to uh, engage with that story and be the protagonist of that story. So at its heart, most role-playing games are asymmetric. This isn't always true. There are a few where there isn't a GM or the, the, the GM plays kind of under very similar rules to the player characters. But on the, on the whole, most of the ones that you, are, you know and are familiar with are asymmetric at their heart. The players uh, and how they interact with symmetry or asymmetry uh, is really where we start to get to the things that are really interesting in how role-playing games interact with, with this concept. Uh, because whether or not the players are asymmetric or symmetric really says a lot about the game and the world that it's trying to engender. So let's talk about uh, symmetrical games, right? Uh, there are role-playing games where the players function under symmetrical rules, right? They are built using kind of the same kit of parts, and what choices you make in there might make you a little different. But at its heart, you can always go back and pick up other pieces later. So I'm thinking of, like, some of the superhero games, uh, GURP, Supers, Marvel, Supers, a bunch of them. You are building your superhero out of a kit of parts. And you get to kind of pick and choose what powers you want to plug into your hero. And that's how you create your superhero. And the goal there is to not – to make sure that everyone can kind of participate on their own terms. You're all – have a sameness to you, even though your unique expression of those rules is very different. So it's a little bit of a middle ground. Um, horror games, though, that's where symmetry is really important. This is where symmetry in a role-playing game becomes kind of critical. Take Call of Cthulhu. All of the heroes, and I put that term lightly, investigators in Call of Cthulhu are inherently symmetrical. You're all people and you're built using skills, and you have some ability scores, and yeah, you might decide to make your character kind of the, the fighty character. Oh, I used to be a soldier, so I'm good at guns and rifles. And you might make a different, another player might make a character that's like, oh, this is the smart character, good at library use, and, and mental fortitude, and, and, and you know, is, is ready to solve the puzzles. But in Call of Cthulhu, you really do feel like you're all very similar, and you're all very fragile. So when you're playing the game and the soldier gets pasted by the, you know, the, the, the tentacle of the, 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 the star spawn of Cthulhu, uh, and you're the investigator standing next to him, you know, you can feel that your life could be snuffed out in just a moment. He was the tough one and he got wiped out. And you know that because you know that you and are not really all that dissimilar. You're very alike because you're built using symmetrical rules. When that uh, investigator goes insane because he saw something he shouldn't, the soldier knows, yeah, my mind could snap even easier than that. You're all so similar that the peril, the danger that you're in becomes an expression of that. You're all in this boat together. You are all equally frail. And it's only by your wits and a bit of luck that you manage to come out the whole thing alive. Of course, characters built using asymmetry are perhaps even more common. Um, so you have, you know, your GM who works on asymmetrical rules, but the players themselves are off, oftentimes working under mostly asymmetrical setups as well. So think about this in terms of games with classes. Uh, so Pathfinder and D&D obviously immediately come to mind. But a lot of science fiction games have classes or specializations as well. 
Um, this is done very intentionally. It's made to kind of ensure that the group finds ways to work together because no character has all the tools necessary for success. Uh, there are characters who are good at healing. There are characters who are good at fighting. There are characters who are good at, like, targeting people at ranges and dealing with spell threats or psionic threats or magic or aliens or whatever. Um, the key here in the design phase is to make sure that each class has its own niche, its own place to play. I could probably do a whole video about this. As a matter of fact, I probably should, talking about the niches that characters want to live in and how that can express itself. Maybe I'll try that for this coming Wednesday. Um, but if you, if you do it right, if you set up the characters right, everybody feels like they are a unique and valued member of the team, right? Everybody has their kind of own role, and that all is expressed because they all work differently. Yeah, they might all still roll d20s, and they might all still be made of hit points or some other group of numbers. But beyond that, what they do in the play environment, what they can accomplish, is all very, very different. When building your game, you have to ask yourself, you know, whether or not uh, parts of it should be symmetrical, whether or not parts should be asymmetrical, um, you know, and which one is important to the, the type of game you're trying to create. Uh, what does that say about the play experience in the world? You know, do players need their own space to feel like they're a unique part of the group? If they, if they do, then you might want to look at some asymmetrical options and how you decide that those characters can get built. It doesn't have to be as extreme as classes. It could be small things like specializations within the rules, right? Even if you took, going back to the Call of Cthulhu example, even if you took those investigators and gave them specializations and allowed them to work a little bit differently or gain access to more advanced tricks and talents, they would start to feel a little less symmetrical. Maybe that's the thing you want in your game. Maybe you want a more pulpy version of Call of Cthulhu where everyone's kind of more part of a team and less of a horror story. Um, alternatively, you know, do you need all the characters to feel equal? Do they need to feel like they are an expression of everybody, that they're kind of every man, uh, in which case you probably want to look at symmetrical rules, you know. So it all comes down to figuring out what makes sense for your game uh, and what that means for the play environment and the people who participate in it. Are they all working together? Are they working against each other? Do they need to feel like they are? That's a question you have to answer. So, what game are you designing? Are you using symmetrical design? Are you going with some asymmetrical elements? What do you think about how this has worked in games that I've worked on? Pathfinder has obviously a lot of asymmetrical elements. Sometimes those things are working out great. Sometimes maybe they're not. Tell me about it in the comments down below. Well, that's about all I have for this Saturday. Um, you know, if you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure to like this and subscribe. And, uh, Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.